I have to let you in on a little secret in this video. I've actually never applied for a pen testing job before. You know the traditional process that people go through where they, they Google for their job or they search on LinkedIn, Indeed, and they just read through the job description, click apply, put in their information in a sea of thousands of other applicants and hope they hear back. I've actually never done that in the traditional sense before. And the main reason is that I've never had to. We talk a lot about different routes on this channel, different ways that you can get into pen testing because let's face it, there is no one standard. This is the only way to get into pen testing. There's many different ways. I'm gonna share with you in this video the route that I've used that has allowed me to never have to traditionally apply for a pen testing job. So we'll start with college. I did go the traditional route and it ended up getting me the job, but at the expense of being over $200,000 in student debt. So another caveat to going on this route is that I didn't start directly in pen testing. I had to start in IT and then work there for a period of time and then eventually move into pen testing. So with college, the nice thing about it is that I did go to a pretty well-known school that had a pretty good cybersecurity degree program, or at least it was accredited to be a good program vetted by the NSA. Let's face it, the program was not was not anything special. I didn't learn hardly anything in there that I use today, but the piece of paper w was pretty good. So that helped me get my first job, which I got that through the career fair at school. So even still, I didn't directly apply to that job either. There was a career fair. There were some booths set up with different recruiters. I went, talked to them. They said, we'd like to schedule an interview with you on campus in a couple of days. I went to that, I interviewed, and then I ended up getting the job. So that was a Fortune 100 company, which is also a, a good thing in the sense that it was a very well-known company. Everyone knows this company, so that looks good on my resume, obviously. So I started off doing some IT operations, uh, backup and recovery administration. So it was pretty similar to server administration, so I got to deal with Linux and Windows systems, which... That part did help for what I do today, certainly. Got me some pretty good experience, some scripting, things like that. And then a couple of years, I think about a year and a half later, I end up making a lateral movement within the company. Now, that was also something that was of good fortune for me. Uh, very good luck. Sometimes luck does come into play, to be honest. So the situation there was that there was... a. Uh, we had a new manager come on to our team when I was in IT operations. This guy came over from the security side. He used to be a manager or one of the, right under the director, I believe, on uh, the management side over on the cybersecurity team. He came over, started managing our team. He saw that I was doing a really good job. That's the key, guys. If you want to get lucky, you have to put yourself in a position to get lucky. So, even though I wasn't doing cybersecurity like I wanted to do, I was doing IT operations, I made sure that I put in my best effort and I did above and beyond the absolute best job that I could. So I was really one of the standout members on the team, one of the go-to guys on the team despite being fresh out of college. And I was very well respected there to the point that, you know, the management, they, they caught eye of that. So when the guy came over from the security team and he saw how good of work I was doing for them. He gave me an opportunity that he wouldn't have given me if I didn't do this. Right. So he gave me that opportunity. He said, Hey, I know you went to school for cybersecurity and that's something, is this something you're still interested in? I talked to him. I said, yep, I really want to get into that area. And, you know, I've been doing a lot of work on the side outside of work to, to learn this stuff as well. So he said, okay, I have a lot of connects over there. Let me set you up with an interview with the director of that team. So I instantly, I cut through any of the, you know, people that are applying online, obviously from the outside, because I'm already in that company for one thing. So uh, as a little aside, be willing to take a job. If you're, especially if you're going the college route, be willing to take a job that is not cybersecurity, knowing that, you know, if they have a cybersecurity team, in their company, you could make the lateral movement like I did for one thing. But, you know, I was able to cut through, obviously, the general public just by being in the company. And I was also able to cut through the formal applying that I would need to do within the company even 
because I got an interview directly with the director. Not only that, I got a good recommendation from a guy that the director knew and probably respected as well because he'd worked with him before. So I'm starting off in an amazing position here. So I go into that interview and, you know, I, I, I use my interviewing skills, which are pretty limited at the time, but because I'm doing so much outside of work, uh, and I, I just convey that, you know, how I am putting in all this time. I tell them, I tell him about some of the things that I'm doing outside of work to further myself in pen testing and really just showing him that I have that growth mindset and that I am leveling up and this is how I am doing it. That, that is a very good look, especially I think if you are someone that is newer, you know, less experienced, if you can really play to the fact that you are, constantly putting time into learning this stuff and just show show the soft skill sides that you have you know your your drive and your determination to learn the stuff and your enthusiasm for learning it and that will go a very long way because if you're new chances are the person interviewing you they're not expecting you to have a ton of technical skill and knowledge but if you can convey this that's a really big thing so that ended up getting me the job my first job as a pen tester and I spent a couple years there and what I did is I started building up my portfolio, just like I talk about all the time on this channel. Now I'm someone that's doing this stuff for real here. And uh, I'm combining that with outside work that I'm continuing to do to level up in this field because that's this, one of the things you have to do to be successful in this field of cybersecurity and pen testing is you need to also constantly be learning on the side and leveling up. So I am documenting that process. I'm showing my work outside of work and I'm also gaining valuable experience on the job. I'm adding all this stuff to my LinkedIn, really building it up and helping me stand out. And now, next thing you know, I'm starting to get some messages from recruiters on LinkedIn. They're saying, hey, I've seen your profile. I'm recruiting for this position, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that helps me cut through that general stack of people that are just applying online, sending their resume in a sea of another thousand, you know, thousands of people. These headhunters are reaching out to me directly. I'm getting to bypass all of that. And so now I am finding myself in interviews, you know, two years later when I'm deciding, you know, I, I kind of like to look around for another opportunity out there. So I start replying to these guys, setting up interviews with them, having successful interviews with the headhunters. Then they're setting me up with interviews with the technical people and this is where I start doing this a whole bunch, iterating on this, getting a lot of experience in interviewing because I'm getting a lot of opportunities. My interviewing skills aren't that great. Now I have some experience under my belt. So they expect me to know a little bit, right? And just going through the interview process, finding out what the most common questions are and leveling up on my experience there allowed me to eventually get my next job and this is part of my motivation for creating the top 10 pen testing interview questions that you need to know, which you can find in the description below because it did take me a lot of time to figure out, okay, what are the most common questions? What do I really need to know going into these interviews? So I tried to share it, pay that experience back to you guys and share it with you absolutely for free. That way it can help speed you along the process and hopefully you can land the job without having to go through as many interviews as I had to, to get here. So check that out for free in the description below. But once I did land that next job, it was a huge leap forward in terms of salary, in terms of just quality of the job overall. And that is where I spent the next, I believe it was a year and a, about a year and a half there and leveling up as well, getting some experience. That one was on the government side. So it was pretty cool. I started off with a fortune 100 company. Now I'm over into the government and that's a whole different experience seeing how things work there. I will say, uh, with all things considered, I am not a fan of working for government now. And I, I probably won't go back into that space. Uh, it's, it's pretty political. Uh, I mean, some Fortune 100 companies could be pretty darn political as well, let me just say. But yeah, definitely on the, on the government side, there was a lot of that going on now. The nice thing about being a pen tester is since you're doing such technical work, you don't have to play the politics as much, but it's still the politics affects you. So for example, here's just to give you an example. It's very, everything on the government side is very 
very strict, formal. There's a formal, formal process for every little thing. So it makes it very bureaucratic when you try to do anything. So we had Kali Linux boxes set up for us to do pen testing. And then for some reason, it did not get approval, some kind of approval in the process chain to be renewed. So what they said is that, you know, instead of fighting for this, getting this approval again, you're just going to have to switch to Red Hat Linux and we're going to have to provision Red Hat and you're just going to have to SSH into the boxes. And we're like, no, we need like GUI access as well because we have certain tools that we need GUI access to. So then we're trying to figure out a workaround for that. And it's like all this stuff could have been avoided if you just gave us approval on our Kali Linux machines. And yeah, there's this whole, you know, all this politics and stuff going back and forth and, and this and that. And, uh, but overall, it was a good experience, a good learning experience. I definitely leveled up while I was there as well. But from there, I, once again, same thing happened where I continued to get that stream of headhunters in my LinkedIn inbox. So definitely, I recommend LinkedIn and building that up. I don't know how much you already know about it, but chances are you aren't taking full advantage of it. I kept responding to these because I reached a point where I was kind of looking to to move out of there. It wasn't really enjoying that government job as much. So I started entertaining these offers once again, and I ended up finding the job with my current employer. And that was a huge process getting that job. There was about six rounds of interviews, a technical assessment. I've talked a little bit about on the channel before. It was very, it was very encompassing to get into that. So but that all of that is to say, you know, all these jobs that I, I picked up, I, I was able to do so without having to formally apply to a single job. And here's where I am today. And if you are, you know, following your own path right now, what I would say is if you get, whether it's the college degree or some certifications or just a lot of experience that you're then documenting, you know, maybe you don't want to get any certs or college, just document your experience, put that out there on the internet and really build that up. Landing the first job is the most difficult part. Once you do, if you just continue to build up your portfolio and you have that experience you're building upon, chances are you can be in a position where people are reaching out to you for jobs, in which case you probably won't ever have to formally apply to a job ever again. So hopefully this one was insightful for you, helpful. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And if you want to get into some technical content as well, I have it on the screen for you right now. I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.